Reading with your kids. Hey, 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 so great to see you. Come on in. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast, coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. We are so delighted that you're part of our beautiful Reading with Your Kids podcast family. Please be sure to subscribe to the show on the iHeartRadio app, Spotify, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, wherever you find your podcast. We have a wonderful guest today. He is the author of the big book of family games. You are really going to have fun meeting Brad Berger. Hey, since we're on the subject of having fun, I know that you and your kids would have a whole lot of fun experiencing my educational magic shows. But don't take my word for it. No, don't take my word for it. Listen to a, a, a recommendation that was recently posted on Alignable by Assistant Mary Watson, who is a principal of St. Patrick's School down in McGowan, Tennessee. Gently came to our school and gave the most entertaining presentation to our students. We were all engaged and enthralled from beginning to end. His show helped every child to feel important and valued. I, I really love that Sister Mary was enthralled and that they all had a lot of fun. But what I love most of all is that by experiencing my show, all the kids felt valued. And that's why I love using my magic to help kids feel valued, to inspire kids to be kind, to be caring, to help others feel valued. I would love to bring my shows to your community. You can find out more about my shows by going to my website, jedley.com, J-E-D-L-I-E, jedley.com. And if you happen to have the Reading With The Kids podcast webpage bookmarked on your computer, make sure you go to readingwithyourkids.com slash live. Joining us on the line right now from Long Island in the beautiful state of New York. He is a past guest on the show. He's back to celebrate his brand new book, The Big Book of Family Games. Please welcome back Brad Berger. Brad, how are you? Hey, Jed. How are you doing? Thanks uh, for having me. Great to have you back. Uh, we were, Brad was on uh, a few months back to talk about the original Big Book of Family Games. And this is a... Um, uh, a 10-year a, a project, you were telling me. Yeah, this is uh, it's probably uh, 10 years. Uh, it has been in the works for 10 years, although it's, it includes uh, 101 of, of my favorite games that I've created over many years, even before that, uh, uh, social games. But it's a combination of the uh, my first book called Unplug and Play, and uh, so games from that book, uh, along with a lot of uh, a lot more games, uh, uh, which uh, is in this book that launches officially on May first. Now we we we're real familiar with the fact that that gaming and you know that's that's a I guess a verb now um, is is big and that there are lots of folks who refer to themselves as gamers. But what mm-hmm. you're talking about in social games, it's something different. Remind us what, what you mean by that term, social games. Yeah, so first of all, uh, nothing to do with technology here. In fact, it's a great way to unplug your group, um, your, your family, friends, uh, your work uh, uh, colleagues, whatever group uh, you have, a great way to unplug everybody and, uh, and get everyone engaged. So what I like to do when I create these games for groups is is create an environment where, where everyone's engaged at the same time. And usually what happens, uh, the result of, of these games uh, are experiences where you, you might find out that uh, Uncle Bob is a pretty good actor or uh, that Laura is a really creative writer or, or that two people think alike or don't think alike. Everyone has different perceptions of different subjects. Um, uh, there, there's a lot that comes out of these games. It's, it's much more about the journey in playing them than, than uh, winning or losing the game. Uh, even though, of course, there are rules and every, every, every game has, has winners and losers, but it's really about the experiences, the memories you create from them. And you are really in control. You're, uh, I'm giving you a guide. Uh, and you are adapting the games to your own group and coming up with uh, with subjects and categories uh, according to uh, 
you know, whether you have uh, kids uh, in the group or so based on age, uh, uh, personalities, specific interests. I love this. I love that it's it is so much different than what kids and a lot of adults are involved in these days. You know, the the, the online games. There, it it is. It's competitive. You're you. In some cases, you're playing against other play, players. You're playing against the the game itself. But I love that your games. The the point of the games are the interactions and and actually growing closer together. Yeah, and that's that's really how I I start when I when I start to create a game. I I always think about all right, what kind of experience do I want to uh to uh to have here do i want everybody to uh, to have before i even create the game itself so do i want everyone to uh, have a, be in a situation where uh, they're they're reading minds or do i want everyone to discover something new about uh, each other that they didn't know even even uh, close friends and family or do i want everybody to to perform or or pretend to be other people in the group. You know, there's a lot of different, I have about 10 different uh, types of social gaming experiences. And so I think about what what kind of experience do I want to create first? And then I go back from there and, 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 and think about, uh, the, uh, you know, what kind of game I want to, I want to put together. We have a lot of authors on and we uh, oftentimes will ask authors, you know, where'd you get the inspiration for this book, for this story? And, you know, and the inspiration comes from a lot of different places. I'm really curious, what inspired you to start creating these games? Um, you know, it's, it's one thing to come up with one game, um, but you've created, uh, well, for this book alone, over a hundred. You know, I think it's just my, my natural, uh, int- my just, Genuine interest every time I I'm in any kind of of environment where I can come up with a the game I do it you know it could be as simple as we're we're taking this long road trip you know let's all guess when we're going to arrive <laughs> it's something as simple as that I'm always I'm always creating some kind of game uh, so it'd be it'd be nice for me to say that uh, I wanted to unplug everybody. Uh, because these days it's it's so difficult uh, when you're when you're in a group to get everyone to put down their phones, but that's really just a byproduct of it. I I certainly could have written this book 20 years ago, and it would have the same value. Uh, I'm just a I'm just a gamer, I, and I and I again as I said before, I love uh, when you're with a group of people and you could all kind of learn a little bit more about each other uh, in a fun way. And so that's really the inspiration. It was just uh, sharing the games I've always played with my own fr- friends and family with, uh, with, with so many others. Where do you think we as a society, and, and I, I'm not looking for some like, like real deep philosophical thoughts, but, but I'm really curious because I think the norm – you know, a, f- a few a generation or two back was that you played games to kind of come together and have fun and to interact with each other. But at some point along the way, we've, you know, uh, games have become um, pretty solitary. Even when you're playing um, with others against others online, you're playing with this nameless, faceless being that's out there somewhere you th- think you, you know you know it's not yeah. you're not you're yeah. not using games to develop relationships where do you think that changed and, and do you think that there's a particular reason beyond just the fact that we could do it with technology yeah i mean i i of course you could sit down and play a video game with somebody as you as you just said for an hour and never talk to them mm-hmm. <clears throat> um and you know i think for me, when my kids were younger and I'm, I'm getting in a car with them and I'm talking to them and it takes me 10, 15 minutes to realize they're not even paying attention to me and, and they're just all plugged in, uh, that, that is just a, a something we're all, we've all been trying to get used to. Uh, and, and now it's, it's not just with my kids. It's, it's pretty much with, with anybody. I, I, I play these games with my my colleagues and, and my staff, and and uh, and it's just so much more rewarding uh, 
um, you know, my my I remember when my kids were younger and 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 I would go downstairs and they'd all be sitting on the couch uh, texting each other and you know everyone's just um, looking down at their phones uh, and I I would say hey you, you guys want to play a game and and they they they'd all say oh yeah sure you know they, this would be a <laughs> a nice little change from what we're doing and it would be such a um, a great experience for everyone so. Uh, but yeah, I, I just think uh, it's um, it's something we we all need to do more of these days. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I, I, I love that image of of everybody sitting texting in in the living room. I'm I'm imagining it's it's not that unusual for you know a kid on the couch to text his brother and sister on the love seat, just like right across the same room, <laughs> instead of getting yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, everyone's doing a dinner. If you go to a, to a restaurant these days, you, you look around and you see you see probably half of the restaurant are on their phones. Mm -hmm. And this is a time when normally you're you're uh, <laughs> you're trying to uh, be with people and 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 chat and and and, uh, and so I lo I love to introduce these games at, di at dinner all the time. You know, mm -hmm. we'll we'll uh, we'll order our meals, we'll tr talk for a little while, and then I'll say, okay, everybody. We're going to we're going to play a little game here, and then everybody looks up, and and now nobody's uh, everybody's um, focused, and uh, so that's that's the way I do it. Give us an example of a game that um, families can you know um, try the next time they go out to the the the, the local um, family restaurant and and, uh, and and can get engaged together. So the first game in my book, uh, the, the first group is is about um, it's it's basically called mind readers. It's it's um, introducing a subject and have and you have everybody uh, uh, write down their top picks on that subject. Whatever, what do you think everybody else is going to say? So it's really about do you have a pulse on popular opinion? Mm -hmm. So if I ask uh, the group to list the five most popular Olympic sports they could think of. Now you're trying to put down what you think everybody else is going to say. Not what you think is popular necessarily or what you like, but what everybody else is going to say. And you could, you could, say, you could do it with uh, uh, top uh, soup served in a restaurant, uh, top fast food chains. I have about 200 sample categories for this game in my book. Uh, but what's what's really interesting about it is 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 seeing everybody's perceptions, and you score based on how well you match with with everybody. So uh, for the topic of Olympic sports, if five out of your six people said gymnastics was one of their their items, um, those five get uh, five points. The sixth person who didn't say gymnastics is out of luck for that category. So there, there's, you can introduce so many categories in this game, but that's the the first game in my book, which which is usually what I start out with to break the ice. And that's a lot of fun. That's something that you can do with a, a family. Uh, you you could have uh, a young kid and uh, a middle grader in it, in a teenager in high school, plus the mom and dad, uh, aunt, uncle, grandparent, all play together and um, be have a lot of fun and and be successful at. Yeah, and, and I'll also give you another example of a sure. game in my my discovery uh, chapter. Um, it's kind of it's called Getting to Know You, where I have a lot of samples of activities that people like to 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 do for fun. It could be anything like uh, something like bowling or, um, or or playing chess or going to the movies. It could be simple things like that. And and you pick, you know, Uncle Joe picks out five randomly from the pile. Everybody puts a bunch in. And now Uncle Joe has to rank the five that he picked out in the order in, in, in which he's interested most, most to least. But everybody else is trying to figure out Uncle Joe's um, ranking order. Mm. And the fun part about that game is everybody goes around the table saying, oh, I think Uncle Joe is more interested in uh, bowling than playing chess and definitely more interested in playing chess than than skateboarding or whatever the activities are and it's fun to watch everybody think you know they know uh uncle joe mm -hmm. and uh, and then uncle joe at the end he goes last and and it reveals his true order 
And uh, that's always a lot of fun. I have a lot of games like that where you you really learn about Uncle Joe. Yeah, and yeah, like you said, that's a great way to get to know uh, people. And and I'm just the the image that's coming into my mind. That I've I've known so many kids over the years, and there have been some kids who are like super shy and would never. I mean, it's trying to get them to tell you what their favorite thing is or what would you rather do. Would you rather have vanilla or chocolate? And they're just no, I don't care. And it's like pulling teeth. What a great comfortable way to to kind of help that kid get out of their shell. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, it's it's amazing. In fact, you talk about kids. I I I can say that about some adults. Sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, and what what I've what we've been able to do with in terms of getting people out of their sh- to come out of their shell a little bit. And uh but certainly with kids it's great. It's great to uh get them engaged. Yeah, yeah. Now tell us what what's the re- now now unplug and play has been out for a while. Um what what's the reaction? What what do what do people tell you uh about their experience with your books? Well, uh the <laughs> A lot of my friends, uh, friends and 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 colleagues and, and strangers, they. I just had a launch party uh, uh, about three weeks ago for this book, where I had people uh, over. This is a group of, of people over sixty years old, and they had so much fun. They wanted me to come back and do that every month with them. And I had somebody come up to me and tell me that uh, uh, he's a, a teacher. And uh, uses uh, these these games uh, in uh, when he's teaching in his classes, mm-hmm. and so I, I've, I've had a lot of different examples of, of how people use these games, but um, yeah, they've just been uh, it's been a great response, uh, and uh, now I'm I'm uh, I'm really happy about this this new book. It's it's really I've created a lot of games, a lot more than 101, but these are my my favorites, and it's it's broken out into ten chapters, so you can really kind of uh, look at the kind of experience you want to have first, and I would always recommend read the game first. Don't just open my book and start reading with everybody. Just read the game you want to play first. Um, have the materials ready, pen, paper. Some of these games you don't need anything for, but a lot of them just all re- only require uh, uh, paper and pens, and uh, and then go ahead and, and go for it. And uh, some of them take a little more time to understand than others. Some some you're going to figure out within five minutes. Others others you're going to have to read the instructions uh, a few times. But uh, you'll get there. You know what I love about this book is is you know there are a lot of books. Uh, Harry Potter comes to mind where it you know it can take someone months to read because <laughs> there's so much there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is and and that can be a real chore. This is a book that. I could I could see it taking months or a year to get through from from cover to end, but it's not a chore because it's taking so much time because you're finding and discovering a game, and then you're actually going out and you're playing it and you're yeah. picking up. Yeah, yeah, and I, I, you're right. Some people say, "Oh, I can't wait to read your book," and I think to myself, <laughs> "Wait a minute, <laughs> don't you don't need to read this cover to cover?" Uh, you know. Take a look at some games, find one that you that you really like, and go ahead and play it. And then, as you said, yeah, it could take you a couple of years even to get through them all. But um, but uh, you don't you don't really need to. Um, yeah. Well, this is great, and, and I absolutely can see how uh, how valuable it could be as uh, in a classroom, and how a creative teacher could take. A game and adapt it to a lesson and, and really make uh, learning interactive and, and fun and really engaging for kids. Absolutely. <clears throat> the only one thing I would add is they. I have a, a little section in the front of the book. It's, it says uh, it's called uh, "Beware of Overly Competitive Billy." Mm-hmm. And um, the reason I put that in there, I always think it's fun to. To uh, when you're when you're playing when I'm playing games with people I don't know, you, I I figure out their competitive nature pretty quickly, and you know everybody has is a different competitive nature. Some are are not competitive at all. Others are way too competitive, and I I emphasize these are social games. It's really about the journey, um, so you really should focus more on that. 
uh, even though those who are competitive can still have, will, will have a lot of fun and compete. Um, it's it's not the uh, the goal here. Now, this is another great book from our friends over at Familius, and so you can certainly learn more about the uh, uh, about. Uh, uh, about the big book of family games at the Familius website. Is, are there other places to learn more about the book? Well, it's on, it's on Familius, uh, their website. It's it's also on Amazon and other other outlets, and uh, I think you could find it there now, and it uh, officially launches on May 1st. Now, you've, you've shared with us a couple of games. What about those... You were mentioning being in the car with the family and, you know, I, I have a very, very strong memory of my son, you know, going down and we're, we're, we're traveling on the New York Thruway and we're passing the Erie Canal and I'm sharing with my son a little bit about that history and, and he was just buried in, in a, in a video game. And it, mm-hmm. it was quite frustrating. What is is there a quick game that you can share with us that the family can get together the next time they're on the way to school or on a vacation or to soccer practice? Well, I there's so many. I, I would say that um, you you know here's something that uh, that you could do uh, with the group. Uh, you can ask uh, the person next to you. Uh, a, a question, for example, um, what, um, or you could ask the person next to you a question, what, what, what skill, if I put you on an island for, for a year by yourself and you could bring someone with you to teach you a skill that you don't have yet, what, what would that skill be? And that person will whisper the, the skill to you, let's just say it's, uh, it's uh, learning how to play the piano. Mm-hmm. Uh, then you say to everybody, okay, Laura just told me that she would love to either uh, learn how to, uh, to do karate, learn how to play the piano, or learn how to be a, a world-class uh, skier. Which one did she say? And so then everybody has to now figure out, you know, what, what, uh, what is the one that Laura told Brad? And which are the two that Brad's making up? And that's always a lot of fun. You know, they try to figure out how well they know Laura and how, you know, what, what is Brad trying to do to fool them? <laughs> and so there you go. I just gave you a, a little exercise. Uh, I don't even know if that's in my book, to be honest, but it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's uh, similar to a bunch of games in my book. That is really cool. Well, we've been talking today to Brad Berger. He is the author of uh, a brand new book that's just out called Big Book of Family Games. Brad, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much, Chad. I appreciate you having me. Please be sure to join us for the next edition of the Reading with the Kids podcast. Our guest will be Shannon Forster. She is the author of a beautiful book called Love Grows and Grows. You know, I'm really excited to welcome Shannon to the show, and I'd really be excited to welcome you to the show. If you are the author of a great children's book, we would love to have you as a guest on the Reading With Your Kids podcast. It's fun, it's easy, and it gives you the chance to tell thousands and thousands of people about your fantastic book. It's really easy. All you need to do is go to our website, readingwithyourkids.com. Click on the contact button. Let my amazing producer, Fatima, know all about your great book. We will let you know the next easy steps. Speaking of Fatima, I want to thank her for everything she does to make this podcast so successful. I also want to thank Brad Berger for being here. He is a fantastic guest. Make sure you check out the Big Book of Family Games. I also want to thank my amazing and beautiful wife for all the support that she brings to my life. And most of all, I want to thank you. Thank you for being part of our beautiful Reading With Your Kids family. And thank you so much for helping us make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking through the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast.